Hello and welcome to part two of Helicopters 101. In this video, I'm carrying on explaining certain parts and components of helicopters. So if that's something that really interests you, definitely hang around. If you've missed part one, you can find it up here. So let's go and jump into part two. So for part two, we're going inside the aircraft again. Here we're going to start with the instrument panel. The instrument panel is basically as it sounds. It's a panel that holds all the instrumentation for the pilot to view as they are starting the aircraft, flying and shutting down. On the instrument panel are things called placards and those are notes and labels and stickers that have to be there um, sometimes as part of the uh, certification process and they have to be displayed so they can be warnings or cautions or advisories or information that the pilot can use when they're flying to make sure the aircraft stays in a safe configuration okay to turn on power to the helicopter all helicopters have what is known as a master battery switch. You turn that on and it connects power from the battery to the electrical system. And from this point on, the pilot can then go and start turning on all the electrical equipment. In all helicopters, you are going to have either caution and warning lights or a caution and warning panel. And basically this is all the um, areas of the aircraft that need your attention quickly as a pilot. So if you're losing engine oil pressure, you'll get a warning light. If you're getting low rotor RPM, you'll get a warning light. If you've not got your battery turned on, you'll get a warning light. You know, things like that, things that needs the pilot's attention if they stop working during flight or they've forgotten to turn them on. Next we have an ammeter. Ammeter basically tells the pilot how much current all the electrical system is pulling out of the battery. Voltmeter, voltmeter is used to basically check the voltage of the battery. This is really important, especially for gas turbine engines, to make sure that you've got enough voltage in the battery before you start the engine. Um, for the A-Star, we want at least about 17 volts. And uh, yeah, you always check that just before you hit that start button. Okay, so we're gonna go over to engine gauges now. So here we have an NG gauge. This is the gauge that shows the speed of the gas producer turbine in a turbine engine. Next we have a T4 or a TOT gauge depending on the aircraft. This basically tells us how hot the engine is working. Next to it we have the torque gauge. The torque gauge basically shows how much power the engine is pushing out into the transmission. So between the NG, the torque and the T4 gauges on a gas turbine engine, depending on which one of these reaches its limit first, will be the indication to the pilot that is your maximum power that you can pull. On a piston engine aircraft, you have the cylinder head temperature gauge. This basically is telling you how hot the engine cylinders are getting. For a piston engine, you will have a manifold pressure gauge. This is your power gauge. This is what tells the pilot how much power you can pull. Um, so if you're flying Robinsons, Schweitzers, anything like that, your manifold pressure gauge is gonna dictate how much power you can pull. All helicopters have tachometers. Tachometers are basically an RPM gauge. The main tachometer that you'll see is the main rotor RPM. Altimeter. This tells the pilot how high the aircraft is above the ground or sea level, depending on which pressure setting they have in the window there. Next up, you have an artificial horizon or attitude indicator, depending on who you ask. Um, this basically gives the pilot an indication of where the horizon is in relation to the helicopter. Mainly used for instrument flying, but it's always good to have it caged and working just in case you get into inadvertent instrument meteorological conditions. Next up we have the airspeed gauge. This basically tells the pilot how fast the aircraft is moving through the air. The faster they go in, the faster the airspeed. Okay, next we're coming over to the engine. There's two types of engines used in helicopters. You have a piston powered engine, which is similar to what you have in your car. And we have a gas turbine engine, which is kind of like the jet engines you see on an airplane. But these engines are a turbo shaft, which means they have a shaft coming out of the engine, which drives the main transmission. So next we have the firewall. The firewall protects the cabin and the aircraft from the engine bay. It's usually made out of stainless steel and basically it's exactly what it sounds like. It's to stop 
any fire going outside of the engine bay. If you have a fuel leak or an oil leak and it catches fire, the stainless steel will help to contain that fire and not allow it to spread throughout the other parts of the aircraft to give you a chance to uh, get out of the aircraft. Okay, at the very back of the helicopter we have the tail rotor gearbox. This basically turns the tail rotor drive shaft 90 degrees to supply the power to the tail rotor. It has oil in there and it can have also a temperature sensor and a metal chip detector in there to let the pilot know if it's making metal or if it's getting too hot. Depending on the complexity of the aircraft, they may have any of these or none of these. Okay, tail rotor drive shaft. It's the drive shaft that drives the tail rotor. It comes out of the tail rotor gearbox and it is the drive shaft upon which the tail rotor pitch control linkage slides up and down to uh, change the pitch of the tail rotor blades. Main drive shaft. This is varies depending on the helicopter, but basically it is the drive shaft that connects the engine to the transmission. Servos. On larger helicopters, um, you need hydraulics to basically move the flight controls because they take so much power to move them. The servos are basically like a power steering that you get on your car. The flight controls make small inputs and the servos basically amplify that power and use hydraulics to move the swash plate and the tail rotor pitch linkages so that it makes it very easy to fly the aircraft. Hydraulics are something that the servos use. Basically, you need hydraulic power. If you're gonna power steering, you need hydraulic power. Um, so some helicopters have a single hydraulic system with just a hydraulic pressure pump, a filter, and your three servos. Um, bigger helicopters will have two, sometimes three, completely independent hydraulic systems so that if you lose one hydraulic system, the pilot's still able to main control using the separate hydraulic system. Flight control tubes. These are basically the tubes that connect the flight controls to the swash plate or the servos. And they are usually tubular and they go down under the cockpit floor or over the cockpit depending on the configuration of the aircraft and they basically connect the flight controls to the swash plate. On a lot of gas turbine helicopters you'll have a thing called a starter generator and this is a two-stage unit. When the aircraft wants to be started the pilot presses the button or turns the key and it starts turning the engine over using the starter side of it. Once the engine is started the pilot releases the start button the starter stops turning the engine and then gets driven by the engine and turns into a generator. So it's basically two things in one unit. And again, the generator is there to provide power to recharge the battery and to uh, feed all the electrical equipment during flight. Okay, the fuel that helicopters use, there's two types. If you have a piston engine, you use AV gas and also known as aviation gasoline. It's usually 100 low lead and it is blue. Gas turbine engines or jet engines use Jet A. Um, this is a kerosene based fuel. It smells a bit like diesel, very similar to diesel, and it is clear. You can't put Jet A into a piston engine and vice versa. Um, it just messes it up and the engineers will get really, really mad. On all helicopters, you have what is known as a freewheeling unit or also called a Sprague clutch. And it's basically like a one-way bearing that allows the main rotor to keep turning if the engine stops. Without this, a helicopter would fall out of the sky the second the engine stops. So basically the freewheeling unit allows the wind coming up through the main rotor to keep turning that main rotor to maintain your RPM so that you can complete an auto rotation. A side glass. A side glass is usually on the side of fluid reservoirs, so it can be on the end of a hydraulic reservoir or a oil reservoir. It can be on the side of your gearboxes, and they're basically a sight glass. Basically, it just allows you to look into that uh, reservoir and see the level of the oil or fluid inside. Again, used really well for doing your daily inspections. Usually, maintenance will mark a line on there um, to show what the level should be at. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, really appreciate it. it, helps more people like yourself find these videos and I'll see you on the next one.